So you want to know about prostate cancer surgery and why the evidence says no, but doctors say yes. Well, in this video, you're going to learn all about prostate cancer surgery and robotic prostatectomy and why they are highly unsafe and fail to save significant numbers of lives. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Worstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health so you can be informed and in control of your healthcare needs. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to know all about good health, hit the subscribe button below. Like you, we also get people interested in digital health, so feel free to reach out with an email or hit the comment section below. By the way, Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. So let's get on with it and check a summary of what this video is about. So in this video, we'll talk about what to expect during a doctor's visit, some medical truths, the fact that healthcare is financially driven. We'll discuss prostate cancer surgery and robotic prostatectomy, and we'll discuss the many complications associated with this treatment and the fact that it fails to save significant numbers of lives. Yet the medical community still promotes this so-called treatment. So what are your expectations for any doctor's visit? So anyone who sees a doctor for a visit expects brutal honesty, evidence-based support for testing and treatment recommendations, that the care delivered is to the best of the practitioner's ability, in your very best interests and allows you a quick return to normal daily activities. All of these seem very reasonable. Naturally, anyone seeing a doctor expects to get the most trustworthy advice. However, there are some medical truths that need to be addressed. Only 11% of medical treatments are of known benefit. That's a real shocker and means that most treatments may be of benefit or are of no benefit. Yet, most accepted medical tests and treatments are labeled as FDA approved, standard of care, included in medical guidelines and in widespread use. The fact that there is so much regulatory support for unproven treatments is a very scary concern. So how is this possible? How is it possible that there can be so much standard of care medical treatments out there that are scientifically unproven? Let's examine. So healthcare is financially driven. Because it's full of financial conflicts of interests, it's plagued with exaggerations, misrepresentations, scare tactics and claims, Commonly, some of these claims employ the shock value of a cancer label. Unsurprisingly, patients are often overwhelmed with medical information and usually fail to understand the medical language or its details. The scenario makes most patients vulnerable to doubt, desperation, manipulation, and exploitation. So let's get into it. How did prostate cancer surgery become mainstream? Let's check the next screenshot. So one of the first papers concerning radical prostate cancer surgery was published by H.H. Young, a surgeon at Johns Hopkins. The study was entitled The Early Diagnosis and Radical Cure of Carcinoma of the Prostate. So this was not a scientific study, and in contrast to the report, there was no early diagnosis or radical cure. The procedure was neither simple nor effective. There were no satisfactory functional results. Two patients died and two were left with lifelong urinary incontinence after prolonged hospitalizations. Yet, despite the miserable outcomes, years of trial and error prostate cancer surgery continued, eventually leading to the robotic prostatectomy. But are the results any different with robotic prostatectomy? So the robotic device underwent studies in Mexico because the rules for experimental surgery there were less rigorous than in the US. Although the study showed no clear benefits for robotic gallbladder surgery, 
it was still FDA approved. When the robotics company discovered that there was no market for robotic gallbladder surgery, they looked for other procedures to use the device. Eventually, they found urologists still believing that prostate cancer could be cut out. To bypass any scientific testing of the device for robotic prostatectomy, they manipulated the FDA's fallacious 510K approval process in order to create an automatic FDA-approved label for the device in robotic prostatectomy in 2001. An FDA-approved label unsupported by rigorous scientific testing. Clearly, a treatment or therapy is not unproven because it failed to receive full regulatory approval. Robotic prostatectomy got full regulatory approval despite being untested and a failure. Just remember, healthcare is financially driven and plagued with exaggerations and misrepresentations. So does prostate cancer surgery or robotic prostatectomy save significant numbers of lives? So no, prostate cancer surgery failed to save significant numbers of lives. Check these study results for surgical treatment. At 12 years, radical prostate cancer surgery failed to save significant numbers of lives. At 15 years, no treatment had similar survival rates to those who had surgery or radiation, but without all the complications. So prostate cancer is extremely common, such that it exists in about 50% of 50-year-olds and 60% of 60-year-olds and so on. Most prostate cancers grow extremely sluggishly taking 40 years to get to one centimeter in size after mutation. On the other hand, the Gleason 6 is a bogus cancer, while only 10 to 15 percent of high-grade prostate cancers are potentially deadly. So let's check the complications associated with the prostate cancer surgery. The complications associated with radical prostate cancer surgery are probably more than for any other surgical procedure. It's associated with multiple general complications such as hemorrhaging, etc. And then there's the positive margins or residual cancer in some 11 to 48 percent of patients. Another will have a rising PSA, which means there are cancer cells somewhere generating a PSA. And this is also known as a biochemical recurrence. Then there are the multiple complications affecting the penis with shortening, numbness, and bending. Then there's the loss of erections, manhood, and libido. And then all the bladder issues with urinary incontinence and leakage. These many bad results happen whether your surgeon is experienced or not. So how did urologists deal with this information that the surgery failed to save significant numbers of lives and was associated with a long list of complications? Well, they ignored it and instead concentrated on remedies to soften the blow of these complications. Although the evidence said no to prostate cancer surgery, physicians ignored it and worked instead on remedies to manage patient expectations. They used informed consents, minimizing downsides, shared decision-making where they pretend you understand all the possible downsides. They employed pre- and post-operative counseling. They treated residual cancer with radiation. They treated rising PSAs with testosterone suppression. And then they treated the limp and leaking complications with devices which often needed repair because they broke down. Little were they concerned about the complications affecting the wives, partners, and girlfriends of these patients. So let's look at this image summarizing the many problems with prostate cancer surgery. So here we have an image headlined prostate cancer surgery warnings. All four quadrants of this image outline several warnings and concerns about the lack of safety and the lack of benefits for prostate cancer surgery. 
It's simply outrageous that the evidence against prostate cancer surgery says no, but that physicians and the regulatory health agencies continue to say yes, allowing ongoing harm to countless men. So how is it possible that the evidence can say no about prostate cancer surgery, but that physicians can continue to say yes? In fact, the only explanation for the fact that radical prostate cancer surgery fails to save significant numbers of lives and is associated with many lifelong complications is because of its money-making potential. So what should physicians and the healthcare regulatory apparatus do to protect patients from radical prostatectomy? Till physicians can prove scientifically that robotic prostatectomy saves significant numbers of lives, physicians and the healthcare regulatory oversight agencies need to rescind the FDA approval for robotic prostatectomy remove it from their medical guidelines for localized prostate cancer, and the insurance industry needs to stop paying for this so-called treatment. Prostate cancer surgery is a danger to health and fails to save significant numbers of lives. Just because there's no alternative surgical treatment or any treatment for prostate cancer doesn't mean we should continue with this highly risky and non-life-saving treatment. Like the PSA test, prostate cancer surgery, and robotic prostatectomy are a public health disaster and we need to abandon them. So let's recap. In this video, you learned that radical prostate cancer surgery or robotic prostatectomy is highly unsafe, loaded with complications, fails to save significant numbers of lives, and passes the complications on indirectly to the wives, partners, and girlfriends of these victims. To learn more about other medical conditions, self-care, and digital health, check out these other videos.